Hi everyone, thanks for joining in. I'm excited to have Nikki Crutchley joining us. Um, Nikki's been involved in the group before as author for the day, so great to have you again, Nikki. Thanks for having me, Jackie. So Nikki lives in Cambridge in New Zealand with her husband and two children. She has worked in libraries in New Zealand, Ireland and England, but now works as a freelance proofreader in between writing. Having loved writing when she was younger, Nikki got more serious about it seven years ago and started writing flash fiction. I've never heard of flash fiction before, but um, Nikki said that it's short, short fiction, around 300 words. So um, Nikki turned her hand to writing a novel later and has self-published three books, all of which were small town crime mysteries. Nothing Bad Happens Here, featuring journalist Miller Hatcher, was published in 2017 and was a finalist in the Nio Marsh Award for Best Novel. No One Can Hear You was published in 2018 and was long listed for the Nio Marsh Award for Best Novel. And The Murder Club, a follow-up to her first book with Miller Hatcher, was shortlisted for the Nio Marsh Award for Best Novel in December 2020. Nikki signed a two book deal with HarperCollins To The Sea, which is a psychological thriller, and that was released in December 2021. And I've got my copy there to show to everybody if it's going to let me. Yep, and you've Beautiful got cover. There. I love the cover. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great cover. Um, so thanks, Nikki, for joining us again. Just wondering if you wanted to start off by telling us a bit about To The Sea. Um, so To the Sea is a psychological thriller. Um, it's set on a, a pine plantation called Aluka. Uh, and Anna, the, the main character, she's 18 years old and she lives there with her grandfather, Hurley, uh, her mother, Anahita, and her uncle and auntie. Um, Aluka comes across as quite an idyllic place and they would probably think of it as paradise. They've kind of shut themselves away from the rest of the world. Uh, and they farm and milk cows and go fishing and live quite a sustainable kind of life um and anna is happy enough uh she has never really ventured outside uh she's always told that people out there uh, are no good for them uh, so she stays at aluka uh but at the start of this story uh, a photographer comes along they actually uh, run a artist retreat and they have a little cabin where they uh, host two or three artists each month and this photographer comes along and he has a little bit of information that makes Anna doubt who her family are. So mm -hmm. the To The Sea is told in a dual timeline. So Anna tells the now, the present chapters, and Anna Hita, her mother, tells the chapters that start 23 years ago or so. And I have to say, coming from New Zealand, I really love reading books that have like a bit of um, New Zealand so, yeah and sayings and <laughs> yeah. that as well as the scenery yeah. and all that as well yeah um could you tell us illa luca is that based on somewhere you've seen or yeah so um Aluka, the name i i googled uh some names and mm. i i believe Aluka is a place in australia a small kind of beachside okay. place but Aluka, yeah and yeah. um Aboriginally, uh, it means by the sea, I think, oh, okay. and I thought that was perfect yeah. for, for um, but Aluka, my Aluka is based, um, you'll know, the Coromandel Coast, mm -hmm. uh, so it's the east coast of New Zealand, uh, one of my favourite places in the world, and there's a place called Apotery, um, a very small, small place um, by the beach, uh, not, not many houses there, um, and huge amounts of pine forest. So to get to the beach at a pottery, you, you walk through um, pine forests. And I used to go there as a little girl. We used to have day okay. trips um, from there, from mm -hmm. uh, Whangamata, where we used to have our, our holidays. Um, and I always remembered that. And when I was developing a Luca as a setting, I wanted to involve, um, I wanted a Luca to be almost like a character, I guess, into mm. the sea. And I wanted, um, so I thought of uh, a poetry and I thought of Shakespeare Cliff, which is in Fitianga, also on the on the Coromandel coast of New Zealand. So it's a bit of a, a mishmash of my favourite beachy paddock places on the Coromandel coast. And could you tell us what was the first idea you had for To The Sea? Um, I was thinking about writing my next book and 
I didn't have an idea as such, but I kind of thought about the idea of home and what home means to different people. And I also thought about the sea and the ocean and the beach and how it's uh, people's happy place. Mm. It's definitely my happy place. Uh, and those two things sound quite nice in itself, but I write creepy psychological thrillers. So I kind of wanted to turn that on its head. Um, and then the next, so I had that, and then the next thought kind of comes in waves. Um, I had Anna's character and probably Hurley's character to mind. So I wanted quite a, a naive younger woman. So Anna is 18 when the story um, in the now, the now scenes. And her grandfather Hurley is a very strict patriarch and, and he, he came to mind as well. And then like with most of my ideas, having characters and, and that kind of theme almost, um, the setting developed and then it's, yeah, it kind of builds, builds upon it. And yeah, and Aluka, Aluka was born and yeah, and, and their very um, violent history. Mm -hmm. And we've got quite a few people watching, which is great. Just um, reminding people, if you do have a question for Nikki, please type it in comments and I can read it out. Um, we've got a few questions so G and comments. Jeannie says, um, Aluka's a town on the northern New South Wales coast, not far from Yamba, which is where she grew up. Oh, I know okay. I know where Yamba is, so now I can yeah. visualise where yeah. Aluka is, so yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, Jeannie also said she really enjoyed the book, um, To the Sea. Thank you very much, Nikki, for writing it. Oh, thank you. Um, Sharon wonders how long the book took you to write. Um, so I had the idea probably end of December 2019. Mm. All these lockdowns make me get my years confused. Um, so end of 2019, and then I do a lot of thinking on an idea before I start writing. So I do a lot of note taking on my phone um, before I actually dive in. I, I can't just have an idea and start writing. I know mm. some people can. Um, but I probably started writing seriously in February 2020. Um, and I got a few thousand words done and my agent looked at it and she liked it and sent it off to a few publishers actually who um, were interested in it, which kind of um, buoyed, my, buoyed me on to, to keep on writing it. Um, and then we had, New Zealand had our first lockdown in March, mm. I think, um, and I didn't write anything. Mm. <laughs> Not a thing. Mm. Um, I was too busy homeschooling, which was a delight. Mm. Um, <laughs> so... Um, yeah there was big breaks and it was definitely a book written in fits and starts like i had um you know weeks on end where i'd furiously type uh but i also work as a freelance proofreader um so a lot of um stopping and starting um so i feel like it took the whole of 2020 to write yeah. but i think if you um yeah mm. if i edited it up properly it would have mm. been maybe three or four months of, of writing and is um, that a bit different from previous books you've written? Not really. I think that's the way I write. I'm yeah. A stop and start. Yeah. Mm. We, yeah. Sometimes I really get into it, and it is the nature of my my other job. Mm. Is um, I'm freelance, so I work for myself. So when I have work on, I I have to do it. Um, it's my paid job, and mm. there's no one else to give the work to. It just yeah. needs to be done. Um, but my agent Vicky sent uh the manuscript off uh end of November to a few different publishers. Uh, and Harper Collins Australia, we heard back from them within the week, I think, mm. um, which was very exciting. So mm. yeah, I feel it was the whole of the whole of twenty twenty um, was to the sea. Yeah. Mm. And Sharon says she loves the cover, which um, we showed the. Do you want to hold up your copy again? Um, yeah, it's really. I like the. And even the even the back. Yeah, yeah. the back's yeah. really good. She yeah, just I wonders um, if you had any input into the cover and also the title. Um, so the cover, um, they did ask my opinion. Um, mm. the biggest thing was, um, they sent me, uh, the picture of the woman in the dunes, but it was a quite a blue sky and sunny day. Oh, okay. And they said, um, just look at the girl in the dunes. Don't look at, cause they mm. can change all that. Mm. Uh, and I was happy with that. And then they came back with, um, four other options with all different skies. And I think I chose the, the darkest, gloomy, mm. gloomiest sky. Mm. Um, and I love it. I've self-published three other books and I've kind of had to do that, that um, cover art 
not I didn't do it myself the cover art but mm. yeah there's a lot more pressure on you to get it right and um it was nice just to give this up to for someone some, who yeah. obviously knows exactly <laughs> what they're doing um to the see the title um that from the get-go um that was the title uh and it came to me within the first couple of weeks of thinking up ideas for the story which never happens mm. and I think it was because I came up with that little phrase in the book that's used quite often and it's to the sea for all she gives us and all she takes away so that 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 little bit that um Hurley often says he uses it as a toast or um and a lot of yeah other things a little bit um yeah I don't know how to explain mm. it just a little mm. bit um yeah, don't know how to explain that without yeah. giving stuff away. But yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was the title mm. to the sea, and it, and it stuck. Mm. Yeah. I'm always interested to know when um, they put a picture of a character on the cover of the book, how the author thinks when they first see it like is it how you yeah. imagined her to be or no, were you not surprised at all. <laughs> and i'll tell you um in my first few drafts she had like short bobbed hair mm. <laughs> so um but it wasn't really a big deal to me um what my characters look like is um way way down the list of who they are yeah and, uh, a whole person mm. so um giving her long hair was no problem <laughs> yeah it was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah and when do you wonder when you start your book um do you already know how it's going to finish and how much do you put into the planning um yeah i always have an ending in mind mm. uh for me as a writer it just makes me feel a, takes a little bit of the pressure away because writing a book such a major thing and if i've got um somewhere where i'm heading um i feel a lot better about the the whole thing um planning wise i i guess i'm a bit of a messy planner i don't have uh whiteboards or excel mm. spreadsheets like mm. um, some authors do but i uh, always have a notebook and and as i said i i kind of start thinking about a book two three four months um before i actually start writing and i have lots and lots of notes um but really messy notes mm. not like this will happen then this and this and this um i have uh uh, little snatches of dialogue maybe that just come to mind uh possible scenes and and characters and things like that so when i start the book um i've just got a, a mess of notes that i that i have to work through mm. um but yeah that's about as, as far as my planning goes and to be honest the ending does always change it changed into the sea uh when my agent vicky read it i think we ended up doing three different endings oh really so, okay. yeah yeah, yeah we really wanted and i love the ending of to the sea mm. like we really got it mm. um yeah in my opinion mm. um it's just a little bit ambiguous but i i, I think it's um you don't walk away confused yeah but, like, but it yeah. still leaves a bit of guess yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. which i like mm. um so yeah endings always change but just for me to start a book it makes me feel a bit better having an idea of where i'm going to end up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and katrina says that to the sea was a great book i thoroughly enjoyed it um but found it a bit dark mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and it's a lot darker than my other three self-published books mm -hmm. so my other three books um, no one can hear you was probably quite dark but uh the miller hatcher the two miller hatcher books uh nothing bad happens here in the murder club they're small town kind of books um and, and they're not creepy small towns like mm. they're quite nice small <laughs> towns where bad things happen um but i think when i wrote this book um i i felt like i needed to do something different to be noticed by a publisher mm. um and it worked which yeah. was great um but for sure it is very dark and mm. i i don't I don't even know if I'll write anything that dark again. But, mm, really? Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. And having your previous ones self-published, had you tried to get them published elsewhere first? Yeah. So I wrote Nothing Bad Happens Here kind of 2015, 2016. Mm. And I really wrote that with no no plan in mind. Um, I just wanted to write a book and just I wanted to see how I, I went. Mm. Um, and i got it assessed and um i got a, a bit of good feedback about it and i got it edited um and i sent it to um a couple of publishers in new zealand and new zealand's tiny uh, mm. with pub publishing houses especially the bigger ones we have two mm. um and it got rejected um which was fine because i wasn't really expecting anything at all um 
And then I kind of thought um, I'd have a go at self-publishing and I, I knew nothing about it. Um, my husband is very tech savvy, so he did all the, the layout and all that Amazon stuff for me, mm. which I don't think I'd be able to do by myself. Um, so I did that. And with No One Can Hear You, the following year I published, um, I didn't even bother sending it to uh, to publishers. Okay, so I just thought just I'd keep self-publishing. Yeah, that was yeah. probably a confidence thing. I just mm. assumed no one would want it. Mm. Um, but at the end of 2018, when I'd just published No One Can Hear You, I got an email from Vicky Marsden at High Spot Literary um, wondering if I wanted an agent. And I most definitely did. Yeah. Uh, so uh, she took me on and she really liked Miller Hatch's character and Kahu, uh, the police detective. Um, so she started pitching Nothing Bad Happens Here uh, to a few overseas uh, publishers. Um, and I was also at that stage just starting to work on the Murder Club, which is mm. the follow up to it. Um, and we came close one or two times, mm. quite close to getting, to getting a deal, um, but it never happened. And uh, so when I published The Murder Club end of 2020, 19, can't remember, um, she, I was actually planning on writing the next Miller Hatcher book. So that was going to be the third in the series. Uh, and then I kind of thought publishers haven't been interested in it. So, and if I wanted a book deal with a traditional publisher, I kind of needed to do to something do, else. Yeah. So I thought a standalone. So mm. yeah, that's when I started thinking about that and mm. where to the sea came from mm. Mm. and um belinda wonders if you have a favorite character to write oh i did like writing miller mm. and kahu parata the uh, police detective yeah i feel to me they are um, like friends mm. and i think of them and i think of them every now and then and wonder how they're going so they're nice normal people um but I re for to the sea, um, Hurley stuck with me for a very long time, even after the book had come out and I started work on my next book. Mm -hmm. um, he's just a character <clears throat> that really got under my skin. Um, and I'm not saying, uh, yeah, he's a horrible man. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that horrible and complicated, I guess, mm -hmm. that, um, yeah, he was quite hard to let go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Wendy says the cover um, she thinks for To the Sea really sets the scene for a mystery. Yeah, I think they did such a good job in it. And like I said, um, it's just, um, it's it's their job and yeah. they know what they're doing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, they did such a good job of it. I, yeah, I was never worried about it and I was mm -hmm. always very, very excited to see it. Like that's one of the best bits of the of, of that process with a traditional publisher, yeah, 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 getting to see what, what they come up with, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And even I think things like um, like typeface and, and font and things yeah. like that that, yeah. that you don't really, yeah, think about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that I don't think about. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And um, Jeannie wonders if you do any research. Um, for example, she's wondering if you actually lay in the tide line to see what it feels like as the tide comes in. Um, I, I don't do a huge amount of research. I, I feel it bogs me down a little bit at the mm. start of a book. But um, with all my books, there's some kind of research involved. Um, I have I work with a, a a detective on my other books. This one didn't so much involve the police. I kind of wanted to keep the police out of it because mm. um, um, that kind of ruin it all. Really, um, they'd come along and solve cases, and that would be that. Um, but into the sea, uh, I spoke with a friend who's a neuropsychologist, and I kind of wanted to get um, Hurley's personality right in my head. Like I didn't want him just to be some crazy guy, or mm. you know, I just wanted some. Uh, reasoning to why he acted like he did, not making excuses for the way he acted like he did. Um, so she told me a lot about uh, traumatic brain injuries. Oh, okay. And I, I went into it thinking if you suffered a traumatic brain injury, you you kind of had a personality change. I, mm -hmm. I'd kind of heard about that. Mm -hmm. uh, but my friend told me it was more to do with um, if you'd been a slightly violent person beforehand, um, you know, if you'd gone into fights and things like that, you might it might escalate yes, yeah. slightly. So mm. um, I found that that quite interesting. Mm. Um, and my lovely brother-in-law is a coastal scientist, um, okay. so he he told me um, 
he answered all my questions about coastal erosion, which kind mm. of, uh, you know, it's quite a big part of the book. Mm. Uh, told me things that could happen and couldn't happen. Um, and yeah, I love the beach. So um, even just the little things like describing shells and the bird life and yeah, yeah things yeah. like that. The start, the start of the book is quite, um, I don't know how you'd <laughs> explain it, but um, that was one of the first ideas I got for the book. I was actually in Whangamataa on summer holiday with, with my family and um, kids in front of me were burying their friend up to his neck in, oh, in the sand, okay. which is really unsafe, yeah. but they were having a great time. Um, and then I kind of thought, oh, what if the tide started coming mm, in? And, yeah, mm, I know that's a horrible thing to mm, think. Um, and I went home and I Googled it, and apparently that's what uh, pirates used to do uh, in the 17th century to their enemies. And I thought, oh, that might that's be a good, good start yeah. of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And can you tell us what are you working on at the moment? Uh, so the book deal I got with HarperCollins was a two book deal, yeah. which was amazing, mm. no pressure. Uh, so I, um, I've been working on that. So I handed that in, um, a month or so ago. So, um, I haven't heard back from them yet, so I can't really, um, say much about mm. it, but, um, it's, it's another standalone psychological thriller. And, uh, uh, I live in, well, I used to live in a place called Otrahonga, uh, which is kind of central North Island. Um, my parents are still there and about 20 minutes south of there is a small settlement called Waitomo. Um, mm. the, the caves are there, yeah. white over caves, which yeah. I, yeah, people would have heard of. Mm. Um, and there's a beautiful old hotel uh, up on the hill there, uh, Waitomo Hotel, and it's been called a few different things, but it's closed down now. Uh, and I, as a child, we went there for dinner for special occasions. Um, I had my seventh form Levers dinner there, um, and it's been on a few ghost programs because it's been, you know, talked to have been mm. haunted. Mm. Um, and it's closed down now, and um, I just thought it would be a great setting for a for a book. Mm. Um, and I've um, I've had a little look around there uh, a couple of months ago. Um, I was allowed to go in for a look around, and it's mm. yeah, suitably spooky. So, okay, so yeah. that's the setting. That's the setting. <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds interesting as well. Yeah, yeah. And um, could you tell us what you like to read yourself, and if there's maybe something you've read lately you could recommend yeah. to us? Um, I read a lot of psychological thrillers. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. Um, I used to read a lot of historical fiction and I don't anymore, but um, I'm going to a book club next Friday um, and they're doing To the Sea, which is great, but they're mm. also um, reading Pandora by, what is her name? Pandora by Susan Stokes Chapman. Um, and I think it's just come out and I'm halfway through that. So that's okay. uh, historical fiction and I'm loving it. So it's nice to um, mix things up a bit. And I've made a list here because I knew I'd forget. Um, so this year I have enjoyed... Um, the Wild Place by Christian uh, yeah. White. Yeah. Yep. I love all his books. Um, mm. A Slow Fire Burning by uh, Paula Hawkins. Uh, Faceless by Vanda Simon, who's a, a Kiwi author. Uh, Wahala by Nikki May. Wicked Sister by Karen Dion. Um, the, be the, the best book I've read this year, I think, is Bear Town by Frederick Backman. Oh, okay. He, yep. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, it was such a I good book. I haven't read that yeah. one, but some of his others I've read are good. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Mm. Uh, and uh, Crow Song by Nikki Weaver. She's a New Zealand author, um, historical fiction. It was actually based on her parents' life during World War II. Okay. Um, and I've just finished Blood on Vines by Madeline Escadal, um, who you had on oh, yes. last week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and reading Pandora at the moment and looking forward to reading Boy Fallen by Chris Gill. I'm not okay. sure if you've heard of that, yeah, but um, yeah, mm. he's a, I think he's a Kiwi living in Australia. So mm. I'm looking forward to that. Okay. Thanks for those recommendations. We always love getting recommendations. Yeah. I'm wondering what sort of things you've been able to do to promote to the sea. Because it must have been a bit hard with lockdowns and... Yeah, um, I didn't get a book launch. It just mm. came, um, all, like, almost. But we were just... We have a traffic light system in um, New Zealand and um, the whole indoor and numbers of people uh, kind of made it. And I don't think people are really that keen to get indoors with lots mm. of people in close contact. Mm. Um, but uh, my publicist in, in New Zealand and, and Australia have been good um, and I've done radio interviews and and, and all the uh, reviews, and especially in New Zealand and our big mm. magazines and things 
have been great and I've written a couple of articles uh, for Better Reading in okay. um, Australia yeah. mm. in, in one of the newspapers. So um, hopefully next book around it will be, yeah, mm. we have festivals back on and things like that. That would be nice. Mm. Yeah. And when are you hoping your next book is out? Not too sure. Possibly at the end of this year. But okay. We shall mm. see. Yeah. yeah. I'll keep yeah. you posted. <laughs> and is there any advice you could give a new writer? Oh, so much advice. <laughs> um, my advice is to be careful with advice. As in, um, when I was starting out, I still feel like I'm starting out, but um, often you'd listen to interviews like this, um, mm -hmm. and I listen to a lot of podcasts, and writers would say, um, you must write every day, or you must do 2,000 words a day, or, you know, just things like that. And I often had the feeling as I was writing, um, I was doing it wrong mm -hmm. for some reason. And and I think just um, if you have the passion to do it and manage to sit down and start writing, um, you'll work out your process as you come along. And there's no wrong way to mm -hmm. write a book. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I've taken. That's probably taken me a good five years to um to work out mm. like everyone everyone everyone's different mm. and it doesn't matter if you write 500 words a day or smash out 3,000 words a day or just write on weekends or half an hour at midnight it, mm. yeah yeah as long as you get it done and did you do any courses or training um I did a creative writing course in 2016 so just as I was starting to write, nothing bad happens here. It was quite a broad course, as mm. in um, it did poetry and short stories and novel writing. Um, but I had a fantastic tutor called Tina Shaw. Uh, she's a wonderful uh, Kiwi writer. Um, and and the feedback that you get with each each assignment and things like that, uh, yeah, it was a big deal. And I even remember getting part of Nothing Bad Happens Here um, looked at as part of the course. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. And um, what have you found so far to be the most difficult part of your writing process? The most difficult part? <laughs> I like... I like the, the starting part when the idea is all my own and no one else knows about it. Mm. And I think it gets harder from there, from there on. And I like, I like uh, sitting with the start of the story um but yeah i feel the process process gets harder as you go yeah. and the drafts go on and on um and then other people become involved all for good like mm -hmm. you end up with the most amazing product at the end um but structural edits i and like i always have a slight nervous breakdown about <laughs> and it's always going to be the same way you get this email with two or three pages of notes and your manuscript covered with with comments and it's just so much to take in. And I don't think I'll ever not have a panic attack when I'm reading <laughs> the structural edits. Yeah. Um, I hope I learn how to handle that a bit better. But I think, mm. yeah, that's probably it. Mm. But it makes for, yeah, a great product in the end. Mm. Mm. And do you have a favourite place to write? Um, probably my office where I am now. Yeah. It's very boring. I have a book just, I like the, yeah, the picture on your wall. Isn't it great? Yeah. I love it as well. Um, <laughs> So probably my office because I can close the door. I've got it mm. yeah, away from my children and, and mm. lovely husband. Um, <laughs> and I don't really do. I don't really take myself off to cafes because I just end up. Yeah, I get sidetracked. Yeah. Um, I've got a lovely big comfy chair in the lounge that I sometimes take myself to. But no, normally mm. at my desk. Yeah. Mm. Well, thanks so much for joining us. It's been great Thank chatting you. to you and it's great to have great. you back again in the group. Yeah. So um, hope to talk to you again when you have a new book out. That sounds good. Thank you. And thanks to everyone who asked questions. Yes, thank you. Thanks. Do you want to, thank you. Do you want to just let people know how they can keep in touch with you? Uh, so I'm on Facebook, Nikki Crutchley Author. Uh, Twitter is Nikki C Author. And Instagram is Nikki Crutchley Writes. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Jackie. Thanks. Bye, everybody.